For last two decades, we've been focusing on information technology to deliver the information faster and more efficiently and more effectively. But now we're entering a new era where physical services can play an essential role in our society. A good example for that is healthcare system for the elderly care. So let's take a look at technology. In most factories, car factories, robots are doing much of work. They're already better than human. They're faster. They're much more precise. They're much more consistent without being tired. But they achieve these amazing performance by being very, very rigid and just be following this pre-programmed pattern over and over again without having much intelligence or sense of touch. So when it comes to complex tasks, only human can do. And uh, robots are not yet capable of doing this complex uh, manipulation task. So if you use this manufacturing robot technology for other purposes, this is what's going to happen. This is footage from DARPA Robotics Challenge. <laughs> Even though they look like a superhero, it's nothing like a manufacturing robot, their component technology is exactly the same. <laughs> They're very, very rigid. I call that moving sculpture. And then they only follow this optimized trajectory, the motion planning, and it doesn't have enough the, the adaptations <laughs> or dynamic flexibility. This is how animals do in, in contrast. Animals, they, they're not as rigid, they're not as even nearly as accurate as a machine, but they are, they're much more accurate in other things. Balance, uh, energy absorption, flexibility. The, each step, there's so much complex interaction with the ground you have to handle. So in our lab at MIT, we've been focusing on developing different type of machine that can handle this high impact and physical interaction. This MIT Cheetah 2 running on a treadmill, we had to design an entire system from scratch. I'm going to show you the component. It can run as fast as me at this point. Uh, not using full power, though. We, uh, the, the limitation is not the power. The limitation is actually the algorithm and the sensor. We haven't put a vision sensor here yet. So because of the adaptability, it can run rough train, same algorithm running on a treadmill, and then outside. And it can turn, not as great. Uh, we're going to show you a better one a little bit later. Uh, now he has a sensor in front. It's a laser sensor. It can detect the obstacle and jump over obstacle autonomously. But the most important part is actually landing. That's where this like harsh dynamic physical interaction is happening, and then manufacturing technology cannot handle this. You can jump over about 40 centimeter obstacle at this point. You can jump, jump actually much higher, but it doesn't know how to land. As I said, jumping is much easier. Landing is hard. <laughs> so the key idea here is not only powerful and then forceful, also, but, but also you have to be very flexible. That's how we are. We're very strong, but we're very, very flexible. So um, this is uh, much more close to our, our arms and muscle than those manufacturing technology. And if you try to do this with the manufacturing ro robot, it won't go anywhere. It's like a, it's, it's a sculpture. And that's why these ro manufacturing are, robots are only following fixed pattern, cannot be adaptable. This is, doesn't come free. We had to design our own electric motors, and we had to design our own transmission and develop our own power electronics to achieve this very special feature. So you might confuse that robots are walking around, but the, the same technology is required to walk around at the same time manipulation and interact with the uh, physical world, which could be patient. I would like to introduce our latest version. This is a Cheetah 3. It looks different from now uh, because there's so much difference between biology and, and engineering world. For example, we have a 600 muscle. Dog has 600 muscle. We only can afford to have a 12 motors, so we had to design very differently and uh, range of motion is very critical. This is uh, without camera, without no, having no knowledge about the stairs. It's all about sense of touch. Because our robots are designed to be able to interact. So it's all about uh, the, where the foot hit the ground, and then the robot knows where the, uh, the foot is hitting, and then it adapts uh, accordingly. We have a camera right now where to start integrating, but the vision is giving you only a very uh, rough idea. It doesn't give you all the detail. We are not relying on accuracy of vision. So adaptability, again, uh, this is not about accuracy. It's about intelligence about balance, intelligence about physical interaction. So this is only possible when you have a right components and right paradigm. So I want you to think about this case, how challenging each contact to help a patient, an old, uh, old person, a weak person, not even paralyzed person, to move from a bed to the wheelchair. This is daily life. It's so challenging once you, get, you lose the muscle strength. But each, each contact is so delicate and complex. 
It's even more than just like regular running around. We have a lot to do. We have a lot to work on this area. So I want to finish with a, a quote uh, from Rodney Brooks. Intelligence is determined by the dynamics of interaction with the world. This is an area very underestimated and ignored, and then we have so much to do. Thank you very much. Thank you.